Hey guys, I'm Just Another Engineer, and welcome back to some more scrap mechanic, but this time we're not going to be working on the Turbo Snail. This time I'm with my friend Vilgat. Say hi. Hi. <laughs> Alright then. Um, so, we've been a bit busy working on some nice fancy computer stuff, um, and it is called the Javelin. Now, that that's a combination between our names, J... JA for just another, which is like a little abbreviation, and then Vilgots for villain, so it's actually. Uh, God. Villain. There we go. It's Javelin. However you want to pronounce that. Um, so, yeah, this is a nice little 8 bit computer right here. We've spent the past three or four days working on this, and this is going to be like a test bed for everything. So we're going to be using this for actually planning out bigger projects that we don't want to mess up on, basically. Um, so we don't want to spend like two or three days adding in networking protocols that actually don't work, and we have to redo it. So this is a nice little small-scale testbed. So, get out and check out some of the programs that we've prepared. Uh, but first, a real quick tour. So. Here's the RAM portion. We have um, 32 bytes of AND memory, so it doesn't flash when you put it down, but it, it, it is a little bit annoying when you reload the world, because scrap mechanic logic is very weird. And then we've got a multiplexer for the addressing, we've got our main bus right here, so don't destroy it. <laughs> it's a little bit of a spaghetti fest here, um, but that's fine. Got read and write. And we should probably save. Yeah, we we haven't saved this in two days, so we'll be sure not to accidentally destroy anything. Um, so we've got our registers here, one through four, and we've built in a bunch of redundancies that don't really need to be there for regular operations because it is a test bed. So we have a whole bunch of extra operations. Um, right here is the wonderful clock I have designed. Um, pretty pathetic in comparison to the big old ALU that Vilgot designed. Um, <laughs> yeah, so we, we have our own strengths here that we've designed our own little portion, so he's got the ALU in place over here. So I've built basically all the registers. Um, so here are the instruction registers. So we have A and B. So A would be like the main instruction, and then B would be like an address or something. So we would have load A here. And then we would have the address that you would load here. So we've got our address ports right there. Um, this is, if I remember how to say these things correctly, we've got the task counter and a clock counter. Um, actually, I've, I've never dove into this sort of side of technicalities. I've always simplified it in a way that doesn't make sense to real computer designers. Um, so, Vilgot, this is kind of your section. So if you want to explain it, go ahead. Yeah, so I would call this the step counter, or clock counter works too, and then I've got a little multiplexer here that takes input from the step counter, so, which makes it possible to have uh, less instructions that take more than one clock cycle to execute. So if you want to, say, load a value into the B register and then add that value to the value in the A register, you could do that with one instruction. Whereas in uh, the Turbo Snail, it would take two instructions to do the same thing. Yeah. So I, I'm still working out all the stuff on the Turbo Snail. It might be different. Um, you're thinking of the useless machine. <laughs> Which is yeah. what I have effectively named, uh, oh boy, so let's see, um, CPU, because I haven't actually properly named it, but this, there we go, this we, or I have effectively named the useless machine, because the default is to turn itself off, if it has an overflow, it turns itself off, it has, if it has an underflow, it turns itself off. So it's like that useful, the, the useless machine where you turn the switch on, then a lever pops out and turns itself back off. So I've called this the useless machine. Um, but for this, I have two instructions, or three instructions to be able to add. I have load A, load B, add A and B. But for this, we can sequence stuff. So we have ourselves um, 
a way of combining multiple steps within one instruction. So whereas this we would have to use three instructions in the javelin, we only have two. Um, and I might implement that in the um, in the turbo snail, but it, it depends on how we work it out. So now, um, so that's this part right here. So now we get into the control words, right? Yeah, so this is the control word. It's connected up to basically everything in the computer. So for example, this uh, this one is connected up to the reset on the step counter, which basically makes uh, a instruction end and goes on to the next instruction. After that, I think we have ram out, ram in, and a lot more. We, I've, we've got a binary number next to all of these to make it easier to identify which one switch. And then we have these gates right here that uh, the code the from the multiplexer and the step counter what when it should do what and uh, things like that. Yeah, so, so it's like a sequencer, so it tells it what order to yeah. do it, and we can add little gaps in between. We need more space for processing time, for example, with the ALU, sometimes the subtraction doesn't like to work in time, so we give it an extra cycle. And well, it's, a, it's a sequencer, so that's how we figure out what order things go in. Um, so yeah, that's, and then we have the flags register right here, so that takes an output from the ALU every time we do uh, data manipulation. So that would be addition, subtraction, uh, if we do um, stuff like uh, Boolean, I'm pretty sure, if we do Boolean logic, we yeah. can detect if it just outputs a zero. Um, so we've got overflow, positive, zero, and negative, and then we have a bunch of jumps that check these flags, and we can also output them to the bus and save it on one of the registers or in RAM. So we've got a lot of stuff we can do with that. Um, and then real quick before we move on, with the um, with the control word, we've left some spots open. And of course, this isn't actually limited by a binary number. You can add in as many as you want. And you just connect them in with the sequencer. So if we're trying to do something else with this and we try and extend its capabilities, we still have a whole bunch more control words because this is meant to be sort of like a test bed, kind of like a breadboard when it comes to uh, making like circuitry. You don't prototype stuff on a custom printed board. You start off on a breadboard and you figure out what you're doing and then you start progressing through if that makes sense. Um, so this is sort of the test bed that we would be able to um, develop ideas on and then we would actually move on to a working model and prototype. So the last component that we have right here is a disk reader that me and Bill got designed, uh, say, a couple months ago. It was about at the beginning of quarantine, I remember. Um, so this takes the standard cartridges, which we'll show off later, takes them, scans it, and then automatically loads it into RAM so we don't have to mess around with switches. We just take it, weld it in, press a button, and then it does its thing. It's a little bit slow, but it's still much faster than programming stuff in. It's just because pistons have limited speed, and it's a little bit finicky with getting them to line up. So that's how the computer works. So I guess we'll just show you guys a demo. So now it's time to take a look at the programs that we've prepared. So I have designed number one and three, and Vilgot has designed two and four. And they're in uh, increasing complexity to show off what the computer can do. So we'll take number one here and we'll pop it into the scanner. And this is a pretty basic, uh, basic program right here. So we hit the button and it starts scanning. So right here it's basic addition. So we have load A from a RAM address right there. And then it says add from a RAM address there. So that's this loads into address or um, RAM. Or, sorry, oh boy, words. This loads into register A, and then this loads into register B and adds it at the same time. So that's using the sequencing that we have there. And then after that, this saves to 
some other location in RAM, and then we've got the terminate command which stops it, and then we've got our two variables there. So now it's done scanning. We'll see what happens. Uh, there's stuff in the registers from the previous run, but when we tell it to start, it'll clear itself. So looking in this register right here, we load up, uh, what was that, 85, no, 58, and then 41, and then that equals 99. Pretty sure that's what we have going on there. Uh, just looking at my notes from before. So right here we have 58 in binary, 41 in binary, and then that equals 99. So a pretty simple program. The second disk is a program that shows subtraction and storing of the flags register. So it, so it works by loading up 85 into the A register, then removes 169, then you get a negative number, and then it moves the value from the flags register into the A register and then saves that to a spot in the RAM which is below the answer, just negative. <laughs> and of course you can have more other root numbers than 85 and 169. So now it's loading 85. We have 85 there, 169, it has subtracted them, it saved the value, loads the flag, saves the flag, and it's done. So here we can see the, the 85, and then below that we can see the 169, below that we can see a minus 84 or so or at least what the computer thinks is minus 84 and below that we have to the right one bit on which is the negative flag which we also can see here at the flags register so the next cartridge we have here number three i've designed this this is division, so this is a lot more complicated, and we're using jumps, subtraction, and addition. So, oh, uh, Vilgot, could you remove those little yeah. stubs yeah. there? <laughs> Forgot to get rid of those. Uh, so this is much more complicated, so um, if I remember, I'll put like the little um, notepad document up on screen where I've actually planned this out, but basically it gets stuck in a loop, adds one to a counter, and then subtracts um, two from ten repetitively until it gets to zero. So, of course, it's two divided by, or sorry, ten divided by two. So it'll add one to a temporary red to a temporary value, and then it'll subtract two from ten, and then it'll check if it's zero. It's not zero yet, so it goes back to the beginning. It adds one to that temporary value again. So now it's up to two and then it subtracts um, 2 from 8, and then it keeps on going until it hits 0, and then it stops, and it has our output. So, I'll walk you through what's going on here. So on the first register right here, we should be loading up 0, and then we load up 1, add 1 to it, and then it gets saved. So that's our answer that we're going to be adding to. There it loads up 10, load up 2, Subtract 2, and then save the 10, or save the 8, back there. Now we load up 1, or our answer variable, uh, there. And we load up a constant 1, we add it, now we get 2. That gets saved to RAM, now we load up our 8, and we load up our 2. Subtract that, we get 6, save that. Now let's go to check see if it jumps and keeps on doing that. It jumps back to the beginning, and we load up our two, or our answer variable, add in one, so now it's at three. Save that again. Now we load up our working variable of six, subtract two, and now it's at four. 
then we load up again our first it checks for all the jumps then after that it goes back to our answer variable adds one so now it's at four so we're almost done comes back to the working variable of four loads up two subtracts two so now it's at two still not zero yet checks for the jump still positive so it doesn't jump yet now it loads up our answer variable of four loads up constant variable of one adds it now it gets five so this is our answer but we first got to subtract again so it loads up the two from the working variable and then it loads up the constant and subtracts it, it gets zero and then the jump is satisfied so it jumps to a terminate and the program is over so if we look right here our answer right here is two or sorry our answer right here is five for ten divided by two now the variables do get destroyed in the process but um, in this mess right here you can see we have our answer variable right there which is starts at zero then we have a constant of one which we're adding to that every pass then we have 10 right here and we have 2 right here so it's 10 divided by 2 equals whatever this is going to be and then we have uh, the one that we keep on adding to that so this works only for nice divisions that don't have any remainders or decimals after it we'll work out something in the future when we have more than 32 bytes of ram but yeah there's division so the fourth cartridge is made by me and is the is calculating the Fibonacci sequence until it doesn't fit in eight bits anymore and then terminates. So it works by loading up the val the answer of the previous addition and then the answer from the addition before that and adds them together and saves everything to the correct spot and then checks if we got an overflow if we do we jump down to a line where we have a terminate command and so we have two ones at the bottom because we need to um, have, if we w don't want to start on zero and continue on zero forever, because zero plus zero is zero. So now it should load up one, and then we'll get another one, and one plus one is two, so we'll get a two. And then it will save the two, and then it will load the two into the B register. About now. Yeah, and now it adds one to that again. So now we got three. So now the two will end up in the B register. And two plus three is five. So we'll get five. And then it continues like this until the number is over 255. So hopefully that's a good enough demo on how the Javelin works. Uh, you'll definitely see this computer every once in a while in our future videos as we're going to be using it as sort of a test bed, as I said earlier, on how to develop other systems like, for example, networking is 
probably going to be the first thing that I'm going to work on with the Javelin. Um, I'm probably not going to be uploading it to the workshop at all, uh, unless we like retire it in the future and make a Javelin 2.0. Then we might upload it to the workshop for you guys to use, but you know, copyright and all that, <laughs> if there's actually copyright and scrap mechanic. So yeah, any closing statements you want to say, Philgot? Of course, I'll link your channel in the description so that everyone can find you when we start actually making big um, logic videos on your channel. So yeah, want to say anything? Yeah. Yeah. Probably. Probably uh. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. So that's uh, that's all we have for you today. Um. I'll probably upload another video of the Turbo Snail either next week or the week after, and then I'll let you know when Vilgot starts uploading proper uh, logic videos. So, I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.